Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift. Christmas is just a few days away and from the tone in my voice and the look on my face, I hope you can tell how excited I am. Has he been? Not yet. Now, are you new to Zwift, hoping to unwrap your first turbo trainer? Are you a seasoned veteran who climbs out to Zwift before breakfast? Either way, this is the show with everything you need to know about what's going on in the wonderful world of Watopia and beyond. So without further ado, let's see what's coming up in today's show. The creative brains behind the Yokio tell us what it took to create Mercury Island's newest map expansion. We bring you a feast of festive gift ideas for the loved ones in your life in shit hot bike stuff. There's an expert guide to completing Rafa's festive 500, an epic and daunting challenge to finish 2021. We look back on all the best bits from a memorable year in your favorite YouTube show. Of course, I mean the world of Zwift. And finally, Shane Gaffney is back with another workout of the week. Well, I think that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But before we get into that list of, quite frankly, cracking content, please hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel as always, and let us know in the comments below what your plans will be for Zwift this festive season. And whilst you do that, ah, I'm going to unwrap an early Christmas present from the team. You shouldn't have, they absolutely should have. So let's see what they've got me. Let me just pop this open like that. Oh yes, let's have a look at that. All I want for Christmas is a KOM. I love it. I love it. Can I wear it now? I can wear it now. After thousands of riders and eight lung busting weeks of workouts, the Swift Academy Road all came down to five women and five men competing for a pro contract. Let's start with the winner of the women's competition. A one year deal with Canyon Shram was won by Maud Alderman, an 18 year old based in the Netherlands. I can't describe how I feel right now. It's, yeah, it's unreal. It's amazing. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. And in the men's competition, the one-year pro contract, this time with Alpes and Fenix, was won by Alex Bonya, a 19-year-old student from Australia who will now be rubbing shoulders with the likes of Matthew van der Poel. <laughs> I just found out I'm going to be a professional bike rider for Alpes and Fenix, and I'm just like, Oh, I'm like, like lost for words. I'm actually shell shocked, to be honest. It's actually just amazing, like the dream come true. The Zwift Fondo series is back for its fifth season. Get involved with what is a, a completely fun challenge, along with the support and encouragement of thousands of other Zwifters. The first of three Z Fondo weekends run from December the 31st to the 3rd of January. There are three distances to choose from, and riding any of them will unlock a unique kit. Join Zwift co-founders Eric Min and John Mayfield for the Zwift holiday run events on the 27th of December. For those who complete the Watopia 5K loop, there's a specially designed holiday shirt to unlock. The Adidas Indoor Cycling Series is four days of events, which starts on the 20th to the 23rd of December. Keep your eyes peeled for group rides led by some special guests. By taking part, you can also unlock some very nice looking Adidas Indoor Cycling shoes. And, and this is very exciting, be in with a chance to win a physical Pair. More on that coming later in the show. As always, check the links below for details of these events and everything else. After two years in the making, it's now been just over a month since Neokio launched on Zwift. And do you know what? We have loved seeing your comments about how much you're enjoying Mercury Island's newest map expansion. Personally, I love to turn the lights off and race it in the dark. So please keep them coming. We love seeing them. Like any Zwift map, Neokio's attention to detail is what makes it so unique. But have you ever wondered just how much work goes into creating the elements that make up Neokio? With all new expansions, they start with pretty heavy whiteboarding sessions, a lot of brainstorming. You know, the team comes together and gathers reference from everywhere, from old movies to animes to paintings, and you know, doing their own concepts as well. The first big chunk of that is just coming up with ideas and seeing what, you know, what resonates with the team. One of the big things we were looking to do was to, to make it a contrast to the Yumezi countryside. So where, where Yumezi countryside is very lush, it's green, it's bright, it's vibrant. What we were wanting to do with Neokia was make it feel perpetually at night and to really play off of those, those neon and electric elements to just give it a vibrance in its own way. Neokia's new map development, 
ゲームチームと一緒に打ち合わせを何度も行ってアイデアを出し合っていかに日本の都市を再現できるかということを打ち合わせをしてきました僕らも開発にあたっては日本の文化を最大限尊重するようにお寺の配置であったり建造物の配置いかなる車の配置人の配置というのも気を使って開発を進めてきました Initially, we really thought about how we wanted to make it different from other city maps that we've got in Zwift. So, we, we were really looking at what points of interest and what, what areas, what biomes that we could, we could create to really make it feel unique and really make it fit seeing as its own area.、Um, but even though all those areas are different, really kind of keep everything cohesive and, and in line with each other. When we first started the Nyogyo map, initially I researched the multiple POIs. POI means point of interest to block out. Meanwhile, we're trying to figure out different biomes. Biome, which means like,、uh, it's the each area that looks and feels different. So for Nyogyo, we have downtown Neon City, Mega Buildings, Imperial Palace, Alleyway, Rooftop. Climb and arcade and residential waterfront and such. And as I was creating、um, waterfront area, I knew it needed to be a bit lively with some vegetation. s So,、um, as you're riding, you're not just viewing the waterfront. So, so, I added, like, you know, the park and the walkway that's flourished with, you know, vegetation, trees, and flowers and whatnot. So, you have visually looking out the water at the same time. Uh, you're seeing the part where the city people or the pedestrians are walking around and then being lively. So, within Neo Kao, one of the biomes is the heart of the city. So, all of the neon, all of the lights, all of the technology culminate in this section. It's where the tallest buildings are, it's where the brightest lights are. Everything sort of leads you to this spot. We like those. Graphical elements that are popping off of、um, these structures. you know, So we kind of wanted to take that and make it you know, a Zwifty version, sort of lean into the neon. So when we first started in Neokyo,、uh, we definitely wanted to come up with some, some big ideas. you know, Every time we create a new map, we're looking for bigger ideas, and、uh, one of them、uh, was definitely the、uh, indoor arcade. Uh, that was something that was tasked to me. To take something that is kind of、uh, smaller in nature,、uh, being arcades in Japan, and create them on a bigger scale was something that was going to be awesome. We decided to do a couple sketches to lay out the road and kind of get a feel of how would somebody ride through an arcade, because you usually don't take、uh, a bike or, or run through an arcade.、Uh, so we, we tried to, to get some, some good sight lines. Uh, that you could see across and see down、uh, the different、uh, arcade machines、um, to, to create a, a sort of sense of feeling that you're, you're, in, you're in that building, you're involved with the other people that are there. Neokia was a huge technical feat for the team. We tackled nighttime in a believable city. You know, for us, that accomplishment is. Is huge to us. When looking what to do next, we'll be looking at Makuri as a whole. You know, what does it need? What is it missing? We have a city, we have a countryside, we have a little bit of dirt, we have fast roads. What's left? Neokyo is、uh, another one of those maps that it's, it's going to get updates over time. In the Yumezi countryside, we've got the, we've got the kaiju hand, and then In Neokyo, we've got, we've got separate elements to keep an eye out for. And so over time, we, we expect to expand on, on those and, and to, to really make the map feel like it's, it's growing and, and expanding as, as time goes on. Makurizma is going to be a lot of fun. Yumezi is a lot of fun. Yumezi is a lot of fun. マップで
Now, if like me, you are famous within your family for leaving your Christmas shopping to the last minute just for the lols, then fear not. We have collated a few excellent present ideas for the Zwifters who are nearest and dearest in your life. These items are also perfect for spending any money or vouchers you receive over the holiday period. First up is indoor bib shorts. Yes, indoor bib shorts. They are now available by a number of brands such as Lacole, Wiggle and Santini. The difference is indoor bib shorts are made with a lightweight fabric that is highly breathable, resulting in plenty of airflow to keep you cool during any Zwift session. Next, we have Muckoff's Indoor Training Series. This bundle has everything you need to keep your bike clean from indoor elements. And by indoor elements, I mean sweat. In my case, lots of sweat. It's also equipped with a chamois cream to keep you comfortable during those long Zwift rides and dry loop to keep your bike riding smoothly on the turbo trainer. It also comes in a handy tote bag. Nice. This next item is a game changer, so listen closely. This toolless through axle uses a lever to loosen and tighten instead of a traditional Allen key, meaning it's much quicker and easier. They come in a variety of sizes and lengths as well. We touched on this item at the top of the show, but it's time to have a closer look at Adidas's new indoor shoe. The iconic German brand has developed an indoor shoe that is both lightweight, comfortable and breathable. Look out for the different colours that are available. We love them all. Finally, a heart rate monitor with a twist. Does it go on your wrist? No, it does not. Does it go across your chest? Mm-mm. Wahoo's ticker fit heart rate monitor is an armband. Yes, that's right, this device sits across the forearm and is fully compatible with Zwift and boasts up to a 30-hour battery life. Now, a heart rate monitor is a great training tool to understand your body during workouts, ideal for Zwift and essential if you're gonna race. Links to all of these are below and please do let us know if you end up buying or receiving any of them. Speaking of festivities, the Rafa Festive 500 has become a staple on the calendar for cyclists in recent years. The brand challenges cyclists to complete 500 kilometers in eight days between December the 24th and December the 31st. And did you know that virtual Ks on Zwift count too? You do now. If you're planning to take it on, here are some pearls of wisdom from some familiar faces on how to approach the challenge. The Rafa Festive 500 is simple, but it's certainly a challenge for anyone that is willing to take it on. The concept is super straightforward. All you gotta do is ride 500 kilometers between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and you'll get kudos, bragging rights, and that all important finisher's badge. And just like last year, all your miles on Zwift are gonna count towards that toll. So let's be real. The holidays can be a very busy time for a lot of people. You got kids home from school, you have family visiting, you might be traveling a little bit. So the important thing would be to make a plan Sit down with your family, let them know what your goals are, why you want to complete this challenge, and get them on board to do so. Maybe that means getting up an hour early every day. Maybe it means setting aside a day or two where you do some longer rides, and then you take a few days off to be with family. Do whatever works for you and your family, but make sure they're on board as well. I really recommend pacing yourself well those first few days listening to your body, prioritizing recovery, especially sleep. And if you can, choose a flat course or even do it with a pace partner so you get the community of Swift behind you and also earn some extra drops at the same time. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about recovery. Now there's a lot of different things that can go into being recovered, but if you ask any elite athlete or any coach worth their salt, and they are gonna tell you the same thing, and they're gonna say, sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. You wanna make sure you get eight, nine, or 10 hours of sleep during this week if you can, because you need that rest to be recovered and adapt to get into that next ride, that next day, to finish those 500 kilometers. Now I know it's a busy week, there's a lot going on, you got holiday parties, you got friends and family to visit, you might even be waiting up late for Santa Claus on Christmas Eve, but please schedule in making sure you really get good sleep during this week. Now I want to just say, last thing, good luck to everybody riding in the Rafa Festive 500. Let's not forget, it's not a race, it's just an event, and just participating is the most important thing. It doesn't even matter if you finish that 500 kilometers or not. Just do your best and have a great time. Now good luck and ride on. 
From Mallorca to Miami, Legion of LA to Ashton Lambie's moustache, from Neokio to New York, it has been quite the year for this show. We have had a blast creating content for you and we hope that you have found us informative, watchable, even sometimes funny, and handsome. And as the end of the year approaches, we've decided to take a look back at the best bits from a memorable 2021. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Three, two, one, we're off. I love the fact we've all got together for this ride. And here are my friends. What do you think so far? Looks sick. Yeah, I can see me winning a couple of races under the lights in here. There's the train. Don't get hit by the train. Oh. <laughs> when this map started, we basically started with, uh, let's do something that has a Japan flavor to it. We wanted to create a world that felt bigger than the road you were riding on. What am I going to have to do then to get my quick crushing legs ready for some gravel grinding action? <laughs> So the very first thing I would say is you just do not have enough time. I do not know how I feel. I think I'm all right, but who knows? My legs keep going a bit jellified. The last big climb is just up here. Go on, ask me the question, ask me the question. What's that? OJ, did you ride 312K? I didn't. I rode 317 somehow. Zero racer and owner of the best moustache in all of cycling, Ashton Lambie, set a new groundbreaking track cycling record. How much training did you do on Zwift for this record attempt? Holy shit, all of it. Hey everyone, Matt Lieto here with your final dose of 2021 Zwift Academy updates. Erica, we're away on the finish line ride. We made it to the end, OJ, we're here. I started Zwift Academy Run because I wanted to really improve my 5K time. Today is a really big day uh, for women's cycling. I think it's only really hit home uh, today, sitting here in the auditorium, you know, watching the presentation. It's the first time you know, we've, we really feel part of the Tour de France movement. And I think it's just such an important um, day for the future of women's cycling. You cannot make this man hurt. Colour Cycling Collective is a community of like-minded minority ethnic women um, and also a space for non-binary people. We're here in Truckee, California to meet up with Jeff Kabush. Do you find the Canadians give you a little extra support on Zwift? Definitely a good group, especially uh, with Canada being a bit more winter. I mean, yeah, you don't see a lot of Californians on we, Zwift for good reason. We but. call that Zwift friendly. You went from being a complete newbie to being one of the leaders on an established professional team. I never knew what I was capable of and it was very cool to do that and then and just start to see more results and it was a fun journey. I mean, amazing. Race Across America is literally a race across America. I don't think not one team just rides across America. To even think about racing your bike from Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Maryland in itself is, I think it's a, it's kind of mind boggling. Let's go, let's go, give him a push, go. give him a push. The months before having raced on Zwift, you know, that really gave me the edge to dig, dig that much deeper and to cross the finish line first. Hi, everyone, how are you? EF Education Nippo, I'm from Beppu Fumiyuki. Today, I'm from Makuri Island. Like, even though I was caught with 500 meters to go, it was still pretty surreal riding with Ciccone and Bade. Oh, he's going to be caught on the line. It was Lionel Fiasan who took the win. His first big win at this level. Survival of the fittest. Let's go. And welcome to the world of Zwift. Ride on. Everyone here is having a great time. Me, myself, I've now got to pack the entirety of Woz, the world of Zwift, back into its one bite bag and ship it back to Utopia. We'll see you back there next time. Ride on. One man I think we can all agree who deserves to be on everybody's Christmas card list this year is our very own father Zwiftmus, Shane Gaffney. Without a doubt, his workouts of the week has made us fitter, faster and sweatier all year long. So, for the last time this year, I promised I wouldn't cry. Take it away, Shane the Gaffer Gaffney. This week's workout of the week is ham sandwich. This workout is a fan favorite, featuring sweet spot over-unders with 30-30s sandwiched in between. 
3030s are the cool way to say 30 seconds hard with 30 seconds of recovery. The initial over-under intervals are enough to create some fatigue, making the 3030s more effective. Then, we'll work on your fatigue resistance with the closing set of over-under intervals. Yes, there are rest breaks, but they are purposely short to keep the heart rate and metabolic demands up. And I dislike rest. Better eat your sandwich quick before the bread gets soggy. Next week's workout of the week is sweet spot bursts. Sweet spot training is performed above tempo, but below FTP, and is great for a lot of reasons, including greater workout repeatability, improving FTP, and enhancing endurance. This week's workout features loads of time at sweet spot, but today we're increasing the intensity a bit by introducing some big gear surges into the steady state effort. Introducing surges into an effort helps load up the legs more and creates a stronger training stimulus for your body to respond to. If you like this workout, check out the Pebble Pounder Flexible Training Plan for more like it under the plans tab. Sadly, that is all we have time for. However you're celebrating this festive period, I hope you have a fantastic time and you're able to jump on Zwift whenever you get a chance. I know I will be to work off the Yule Log. A reminder, do let us know what you get up to on the platform and any Zwift related gifts you give or receive. Thank you to everyone who tuned in this year. We have loved you being part of the show and we really appreciate your support. We are gonna be back early in the new year. In the meantime, ride on. <laughs>